Don't you hate it when people cheat on your game by changing the time on the device? Well, there is a very easy fix for this. Let's learn how to get the global time from the internet. As expected, we're gonna make a global time script. Create an empty game object and attach the script to it. To get the global time, what we want to do is to go on the web and search for global time API. That is basically a real time website when you have a JSON that holds all the variables that you need to access the time. In our script, we will create a constant string to hold the API address. We want to create a date time variable to hold the current time, but for this we're going to need to add using system. Just to give the variable some data, we're going to be using datetime.now to get the device current time. To call the time, we're going to be using iEnumerator function. If you want to learn more about iEnumerators, there are links in the description. For us to call the function on start, we're going to be using start coroutine with the name of the function. For us to be able to request data from the internet, we need to be using unityengine.networking. Now we can create a new Unity web request and use webrequest.get with the API URL to get the value. To actually send the web request and wait for an answer, we're gonna be using will return web request dot send web request. Now we need to check if we get a real answer or an error. If we actually got some data from the website, we're going to create a new string and put all the text from the website to this string. If you remember in the beginning, we thought that we get the JSON, but we want to just the date time value. For this, we are going to create a new function that gets a string and return a date time variable. We're going to add using system text regular expressions because we're going to be using something called regex. Of course, there is a link in the description if you want to learn more, but the regex.match will return a value if the formatting matches. And because we have a very specific formatting for the date and for the time, we can use this to get the date and time values. All the code is in my website, so you can just copy and paste this code. And for the final touch, we're gonna use datetime.pass to get all the values we just got into a datetime variable. But for real, just copy and paste it because I tried it and I made a mistake and that's why it didn't work later, so don't be like me. Let's go back to the iNumerator function and set the current datetime to the past datetime time with a variable of datetime we just got from the website. Just a quick fix, we're gonna change the time date to time data because it represents the value better. For us to be able to show the time, we're gonna add show time script that will connect the canvas to the global time script. Now on our global time script, we can create two very important functions. The first one to get the start time and the second one, the more important one, a function to get the current time. All we're going to do is use start coroutine like we did on the start, but then return the current daytime variable. Because I'm using text mesh pro elements in my scene, on the show time script, I'm gonna be adding using text mesh pro. Now let's create two text mesh pro UGUI elements to hold the time and the date text value and create a reference for the global time script. Remember that for us to using date time variables, we need to be using system. On start, we're going to get the start date time from the global time script. And then we are going to change the text of the time and the date values accordingly. Format it however you want, I format it this way. Now on our scene, just fill the show time canvas slot, the text mesh pro time and date elements and the global time. When we press play, we'll see that we get an error because we have empty reply from the server. I tried to fix it using try and catch instead of an if and else. It's good practice anyway, but after googling a bit, I found out that those are editor errors that you can just ignore. I know that it's a bit annoying, but there is nothing you can do about it. Just for the example, I put everything on the update function and build it to see if it's actually work. And yep, everything works just fine. We will usually need this global time on offline and delivery boards. So let's continue this journey in one of those videos. Bye!